uh, geekiest thing uh, would have to be my Warhammer stuff. We're talking Hands Games down. Workshop, aren't we? Yeah. 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 It's um, that took me a while to kind of um, confess to openly and publicly. No, that's a great answer. It's hard to top it, isn't it? It really is. Um, yeah. I, I, and I love it. And I've um, that's the stuff I've done in as far as hobby stuff, the stuff which my escapism is concerned. Um, all, the, all the reading I do outside of work is normally based around that or fantasy authors. Today's topic is regarding Henry Cavill's being made executive producer for Warhammer 40k, potentially a Marvel MCU-sized universe that may include multiple shows, movies, and who knows what else. Now that Games Workshop and Amazon have finalized a deal and they have full rights to go forward. But is this a good thing or bad? I've made this point many times about laws and policies, but it's applicable in other situations. It's not about how good it can be in the right hands when it works. It's about how bad it can be if perverted, abused, appropriated into the wrong hands. This is a good bit of the reason why the United States went with a president with limited powers versus a king. Sure, a king can do great things if you get the right guy, but what happens when he's a tyrant, evil, or insane? A Nero? How's this applied to Warhammer and Henry Cavill? Simple. Amazon, the same people who did the Rings of Power show. A company with endless money buying up rights, well, partial rights in that case, to a universe, Tokian, and then they deconstructed it. Intentionally altered the IP to insult traditional fans, dismantle the core values and European distinctiveness of an icon in literature. These are the people who just made a deal with Games Workshop for Warhammer. And then there is Vertigo Entertainment, a company based out of Los Angeles, California, that produced the TV series Them by Little Marvin and executive produced by Lena Waithe, a lesbian, leftist, and activist. It's an anti-white racist hit piece made into a television show full of all the tropes you'd expect from Hollywood, only produced by Vertigo. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Then there is Games Workshop, who published several messages and disclaimers that should be an alarm bell. We believe in and support a community united by shared values of mutual kindness and respect. Our fantasy city settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred, or abuse in our company or in the Warhammer hobby. If you come to a Games Workshop event or store and behave to the contrary, including wearing the symbols of real world hate groups, you will be asked to leave. We won't let you participate. We don't want your money. We don't want you in the Warhammer community. I wonder who they consider real world hate groups to be. Now what was referenced was an example of someone with Nazi symbols on I guess their attire or miniatures. No idea because we never got the other person's side of the story. The statement might sound reasonable, typical public relations gobbledygook, but in this day and age usually means that the company is full-blown liberal and its terminology highly subjective. Because who do they consider hate groups? What symbols are they militantly against? Because as the left has done for decades, you first get everybody on board with the idea that Nazis are bad and that they're the worst thing ever. Then you get everybody on board that it's okay to punch a Nazi. Then finally, you can go around calling anyone you don't like a Nazi. You've already established precedent for any action to include violence, any miscarriage of justice against them as justifiable. Biden's labeling Trump supporters as fanatical ultra MAGA is an example, not a slip of the tongue, very intentionally thought out language that allows him and others like him to put the Nazi label on their political rivals. By the powers of darkness, evil and fear. It's not confined to political and government circles, my friends. It's all through the entertainment and media industry in every venue. Gaming, music, movies, video games, big tech, social media. Then there is this message from Games Workshop. Note the language here. Diversify, representation, world as it should be. Fuck. All of these are leftist talking points you've seen quoted as objectives by leftists, communists, and anti-white racists. Actual racists. Politicians, Hollywood actors, producers, directors from the offices of anti-white and anti-Western DEI appointees. And we've seen this before. They also didn't appear to provide much context about the incident they cited. We'll never know the motivations of the fan in question or hear his or her side of the story. 
Their statement also came with claims and observations about the Imperium of Man as follows. The Imperium of Man stands as a cautionary tale what could happen should the very worst of humanity's lust for power and extreme unyielding xenophobia set in. Like so many aspects of Warhammer 40k, the Imperium of Man is satirical. For clarity, satire is the use of humor, irony, or exaggeration, displaying people's vices or a system's flaws for scorn, derision, and ridicule. Something doesn't have to be wacky or laugh out loud funny to be satire. The derision is in the settings amplification of a tyrannical, genocidal regime turned up to 11. The Imperium is not an aspirational state outside of the in-universe perspectives of those who are slaves to its systems. It's a monstrous civilization, and its monstrousness is plain for all to see. Yeah, see, whoever wrote this, they haven't read the books. They haven't. Or they're simpletons. Somebody gave them a little summary and they wrote out a public relations little speech here. They haven't read the books. They don't even know their own universe. Or for that matter, their fan base and real history with an unhealthy bit of naivety. Many would find some fault with their statement on several grounds. While you do have an empire with gross exaggerations of certain elements and also corruption, and satire has existed for the source material, especially a long time ago, much of the writing for the books and the lore and its fandom that have sprung from it more than explain the Imperium as a necessary evil. Much of what it does and how it does it being, one, necessary because the universe is grim, hard, and vicious, and mankind has to meet such viciousness with a brutal hardness. And two, the Emperor has a strategy, a 4D chess strategy that many do not understand in its entirety, but one that by necessity requires sacrifices and harshness. You don't approve? Well, too bad. We're in this for the species, boys and girls. It's simple numbers. They have more. And every day I have to make decisions that send hundreds of people like you to their deaths. And many of the actions of commanders and Astartes and other characters, when being harsh or performing an act that is distasteful to modern sensibilities, often clearly demonstrate regret of its doing whatever it is and feel pity and compassion, even voice doubts, but ultimately show an understanding that the future of the entire species of humanity, and indeed all of creation, is literally on the line. Softness, unrestricted strained sentimentality and refusing to do what is necessary will potentially have incredibly tragic ripple effects. Everything could literally end up going to hell. And third, the different factions being at war with each other isn't simply that they're all evil and bloodthirsty. The forces of chaos, clearly and openly spoken of in many books, the Horus Heresy novels alone, have worked hard to manipulate different races, empires, and singular personalities as a huge part of their strategy to take over the universe. It's quite simply divide and conquer. Why should chaos and demons contend directly against empires like the Imperium when they can simply manipulate and deceive members of the Imperium to fight their own? The whole reasoning behind the manipulating the Primarch Horus into warring against the Imperium. Make the Imperium theirs and then use it to war against the enemies of chaos. And they have done this with other cultures to put factions against each other as they did with Primarch Fulgrim against members of the Good Eldar, while literally on the verge of a potential alliance that could have benefited both species. And this is chaos in Warhammer 40k, and the biggest single cause of division and galactic war in that universe. A force of evil that can literally be anywhere whispering in the ear of anyone, finding the cracks in the seams. As for who plays Warhammer, well, all things being equal, I'd say live and let live. You do not have to be conservative for me to be fine with you being a part of our share hobby. You meet all kinds in the gaming community. Yet it has seldom been the case that leftists can do that. Be accepting of people with different views given that their entire creed necessitates them always finding a scapegoat and oppressor to claim victimhood against and then carry out a great crusade, if you will, against that evildoer. Real or more likely the case, imagined and intentionally so. Those who don't signal themselves as one of their group. Inclusion doesn't include those who are not on board with their agenda that isn't inclusive but but exclusive. Because you clowns have been on double secret probation since the beginning of this semester. Double secret probation? Games Workshop's language in describing the Imperium on Warhammer 40k, especially combined with their message about real-world hate groups and their leftist language, says that they are okay with casually throwing around accusations against people with different politics. 
And I mention all this because these people, Amazon, Vertigo, and Games Workshop, are the people behind the Warhammer content that Henry Cavill will be an executive producer for. Henry did make a statement that, to all you Warhammer fans out there, I promise to respect this IP that we love. But given that Games Workshop may not even be sure of what Warhammer 40k is really about, and what the majority of its fans actually love, or else they wish it was more of the satire it mostly was in its earlier iterations before Doug Dozens and dozens of books and content developed it with strong influences from all over, including Christian themes and literature, the Bible, and Paradise Lost. And secondly, considering that all the people with the purse strings have shown themselves to have a definite agenda and a strong will to push that agenda, how in hell will Henry, even as an executive producer, resist them? Is he prepared to refuse to race swap Euphrates Keeler into a black lesbian, or make the Astartes all gay men, or make the the central message of Warhammer that masculinity and white people are the real enemy. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Because Amazon would, Games Workshop appears to be, rumor has it that the showrunners for Amazon's Rings of Power Season 2 are race swapping Sauron. Oh, somebody kill me, please! A complete departure from Tolkien's work in letter and spirit. And people are wondering this very thing. Whether Warhammer is going to be another Thelma take on Scooby-Doo or Star Wars reboot or The Little Mermaid, Cleopatra, Annie. Good lord, the examples are legion and not of the Warhammer kind. Fans have good reason to be concerned. Just about every video I see regarding Henry Cavill doing Warhammer back when he announced, and really any announcement about a new show or movie or remake based on a book or universe, everyone talks about their concern regarding whether a studio will be respecting the source material, the IP, over and over. I think this could be absolutely fucking huge. And as long as they do a good job in like just respecting the source material, like it's so weird, right? Because like this comes after like one day, did you guys see this bullshit? Look at this. This just, it makes me so fucking mad. Why is this? Do you remember Judge Dredd? Did Carl Urban ever take the fucking helmet off? He never did because that's not what the character would have done. And more so, Carl Urban is infinitely more well known than whoever this guy is. And he still didn't do it. So I don't want to fucking hear about this bullshit or anything else. I uh, cannot believe that you have so many of these shows. Like, isn't Halo fans enough? Like, why can't you just make the show for Halo fans? Like, I would have watched it. Absolutely. And so, yeah, as long as you uh, stay true to the source material and respect it, then you'll have no problems. And yet we continue to see bastardizations or full-blown insulting deconstructions. And then, still, the next thing gets announced and people, again, ponder whether it will stick to the IP or plug for leftism. Now, I fully credit Henry Cavill as a gamer and hobbyist, playing Warhammer and the like, reading the books, all of it confirmed and legit. It's not staged. He's obviously very passionate. Let's talk about what you guys personally geek out about. Henry, let's start with you. Uh, specifically, which universe, or just? I mean, just anything. Oh my goodness! Here we go. Is, well, how long have you got? You've got so many, and I've got none. Yeah, like, I was like, how much time do we one? have? I, I, listen, I'll sit here all day listening. Uh, ruling out The Witcher. Yeah, not okay. The Witcher. Okay. Um, I mean, the easy answer is um, Warhammer Forty Thousand. That is my my jam. Um, <laughs> I have been into it since I was ten. What's and, your army um, at the moment? Uh, custodies. Ah, uh, yeah. I've, I'm going. I'm going Necrons next. Necrons. Wait, oh. Okay. All right. Cool. Were Shall you we? into yes? Great. Were you into this before, or is oh, this yeah. a new thing? Just, oh. Let's just assume that anything nerdy I've been doing for a good thing. Oh wow, years. we could talk for hours. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, this is that. That's that's my jam, and that's the stuff um, I, I do in my free time. That's amazing. Amazing. Um, I'd love to see your your armies. Your collect. Do you paint them yourself? I do. Yes. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. But you you paint. Is it War of War, World of Warcraft? Uh, Warhammer. Warhammer. I'm a yeah. fool. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, it's Warhammer, Greg. Okay, Warhammer. Uh, so what? So you 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 paint by hand? Yes. Yeah. Um, Does everyone do that, or can you buy them re already no, painted? No, you, you have to paint them, but it's just how much effort you put into it. There's, and you there's, put a lot of it. There's the painting, modelling side of the hobby, and then there's the gaming side of the hobby. Okay. And when you paint them, what do you do with them then, Henry? Then you um, put them together in little armies, and you fight against someone else's army. <laughs> 
it's actually, it's, it is fun. Oh, I mean, very it sounds fun. ridiculous, but it is yeah, fun. Yeah, no, toys, very good fun. He's also clearly communicated awareness of IPs being perverted and altered, though he stopped short of any mention about the insertion of politics and wokeness, either as a chief motivation for and or the nature of those alterations. At times, he sort of seems like he knows this, though, or encountered it. There's something really interesting with this character that I find fascinating, which is that he genuinely really does just want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But everywhere he goes, whether it's a new town or a new bar, people just kind of give him a hard time and they rag on him despite the fact that he has great intentions. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. It does appear that he's not ignorant about the danger. You'd think so anyway, following his departure from The Witcher show, which slowly eased him out as a character and finally as an actor for the show. Yet was his departure and problems with that show truly as suggested or stated? Rumors have said he was upset at the show's deconstruction of The Witcher and source material for it, that he was frequently commenting on the production for the show given his love for and familiarity with The Witcher, and that he often met opposition. Rumors have also said he's just difficult to work with. It smells like shit. It is shit, Austin. Oh good, then it's not just me. This later claim that I've seen float around isn't mutually exclusive to the former, though, and I can completely see liberal producers and writers tossing that around to put blame on his shoulders for the show's slow landslide into failure instead of their woke agenda. Departure from the source material to plug for leftism is usually the overriding motivation, not some inspired artistic approach. I cannot help but make the conclusion Henry simply signed on to the show and then seeing that they were intentionally perverting it decided to leave when the leaving was good to go do Superman. I wanted to make it official that I am back as Superman and the image you see on this post and what you saw in Black Adam are just a very small taste of things to come. So uh, there's a lot to be thankful for. Question may be whether he was cut from Superman for political purposes. His statements not being liberal enough, being too supportive of fans instead of sticking to the popularly promoted narrative that any pushback from fans is motivated by racism, sexism, or toxicity. Then as of this moment, they're on double secret probation. Well, it might be, given my earlier points, that once you have people on board with the idea that Nazis are the worst, that it's justified to punch them, then you can go around and call anyone Nazis, and it must follow that there really is no tactic or method that isn't then justified against them. Call anyone who disagrees with you a Nazi, and you can ban them from your Warhammer convention or trash talk them as a group. Label them the reason for your show or movie being a box office disaster instead of your leftist agenda altering the source material, your writing being the sort of drivel that would normally get tossed into a dumpster, your bad directing and acting because you cast these people to check a box instead of through merit and talent in these professions, or the fact that fans have begun to identify your studio and its intentions. So what exactly are Henry Cavill's politics? He signed on with Games Workshop and Amazon to do Warhammer for them. What's his agenda? What are his social and political views? There is admittedly not much I could find, and what I did find, his social political statements, are also the kinds of things actors will state when plugging for a movie or show that they've just done, and when surrounded by reporters or being golded by an interviewer. The message the studio wants promoted. Equality, diversity, etc. Here is an article quoting his alleged remarks about Enola Holmes 2. Now I slammed Games Workshop for the same kind of thing, so I don't think I should go easy on Henry either for spewing leftist talking points. Yet in my searching, this was mostly all I could find. I do admit I didn't do as deep a dive as I probably should, but also in such a search as I did perform, there should have been a lot more had he been an activist leftist like Jodie Foster or given to insane leftist rant 
clients like Mark Hamill, meaning he is either keeping his views to himself, mostly non-political, or the search algorithms for Google, YouTube, and others are suppressing it, something I definitely will not deny is possible. He's likely liberal, likely moderate, or just an old-school professional who believes it's not his place as an actor to plug for his personal politics, and I am just fine with that. I wish more actors were the same, and Warhammer truthfully is diverse and checks at least in part many of the things liberals claim they want. There are women in the military, women in combat roles, there are even women in special units from the Adeptus Cerritos, Sisters of Silence, and even some appearing amongst special forces like Gaunt's Ghosts, for lack of a better way to describe them as a unit. The Imperium has all races represented in roles and status, largely equal and without any racism I saw. It's not even a thing amongst humanity and Warhammer. People complain about the Astartes being all male, but they also appear to be diverse in terms of racial aspects, given that they share characteristics, mostly at least, with their Primarch patron. And there were black Primarchs and Asian Primarchs. But I'm here to say that that will not be enough. The agenda calls for destroying or repurposing and appropriating any symbols, icons, and role models. And so expect to see Garville Loken become a black gay Astartes and the Emperor to be depicted outright as a Trump clone, making racist comments out of character to the Emperor, and for that matter, Trump. So will Henry Cavill submit to the will of Amazon, Vertigo, and Games Workshop, and take a largely already diverse universe, and go full retard? Got a good brain. Will it depart from source material and canon? Of course it will. Are you kidding me? How many times do companies like Amazon, Disney, and others have to do this for people to realize their intent? Or everyone gets all happy with a first episode, a first season, and then they're shocked and angry later when suddenly it goes full retard. You m m m m m m m make me happy. Why? Of course it was always going to. They always go full retard. Everybody knows you never go full retard. It's going to be done brazenly from the beginning, or they will slowly trickle it in with mission creep. A little more, and then more. Oh, we're just changing a few aspects to reflect a modern society. Oh, we're just representing a little. The slow boiling of the frog. The bait and switch, which is exceedingly common. Lure people in with a good initial outing. This may be just the trailers for the show or movie, or a first episode or two, or even a full season. And then wham! Full retard. Retarded. Like really retarded. Oh, yeah. But it's always baked in, always planned. It is the agenda. Guys, this isn't about money, or not mostly. They're attempting to change and control the culture and brainwash youth, counting on it eventually paying off, creating the future customer and fan base. A long-term investment, or so they think. And so they, of course, keep doubling down no matter what catastrophic dive their company stocks take. It's over! Nothing is over! Bob Iger, at the helm of Disney, knows what he's doing when he keeps doubling down. And if they do not succeed, well, they barely even care. Because from the perspective of many, it's an accomplishment to destroy a company and icon like Disney, if nothing else. Think Amazon wasn't aware that the Rings of Power show was going to go full retard on wokeness? Intentionally deconstruct Tolkien's work and insult its fans? Think that conversation didn't happen? Of course they knew. They may have underestimated the blowback, but they are doubling down. Warhammer is going to be the next Thelma or Rings of Power or She-Hulk. You may get a little from it, a first good season or possibly two, like with The Mandalorian, but eventually it will be too much. They'll keep pushing and pushing until the Astartes have female warriors or they introduce Primaris Space Marines as an all-girl military force, better and stronger than the Astartes. <laughs> We'll get spe good special effects, maybe some cool battles. Just because they are leftist doesn't mean they're entirely stupid. There has to be enough to rope people in. But don't get your hopes up about the IP being preserved. You can quote me on this. Warhammer's IP was destined to be deconstructed or perverted the moment Amazon signed on, and Henry will not be able to stop it if he even wants to.